let's look at PDMP. No one can argue the need to address the opioid epidemic. The seriousness of the epidemic is in the news daily, along with multifaceted approaches needed to mitigate it. It is the top national priority for Congress and our current administration. Since 2012, NCPDP has been educating policymakers and industry leaders about a nationwide standards-based PDMP model that will curb the opioid use and abuse with intervention at the point of care. At the same time, it will help that pain, that will ensure that pain medications are available in a timely manner for those patients who really do need them. NCPDP's telecommunication and script standard are at the core of our model. They are a key to shoring up gaps in existing PDMPs and providing real-time, actionable data within the provider workflows for informed decision-making at the point of prescribing as well as dispensing. The model also leverages the role of the private sector facilitator, a third party that would collect the data, identify at-risk patients, and alert providers before a prescription is prescribed. To be clear, NCPDP will have no affiliation with the, affili uh, with the facilitator, nor will we be receiving any compensation for industry use of our model. Our educational efforts on behalf of the PDMP model created by the NCPDP members have demonstrated that the standards do matter. Key elements of the NCPDP model have been included in legislation. Healthcare industry leaders have expressed their support and NCPDP is continually being asked to serve as a resource to stakeholder groups that are supporting our PDMP model as a so solution to help address the opioid crisis. This, this initiative is meaningful to me both professionally and personally. For many of us, we are here doing our work. Because we know the standards and the guidance documents produced in our forum make a difference in people's lives. We first announced the development of our PDMP white paper back in 2013. That was five years ago. Little did I know back then that my family would, would have our own deeply per personal connection to this issue. Daniel, will you please join me on stage? My son Daniel is addicted to opioids. I am so proud of his being sober now for nearly one year and that he is here to share his story with you. Thank you, Mom. <sighs> um, if you don't mind, I would like you to join me in a, a moment of silence. I'm a little bit nervous, so I want to take a few minutes to gather myself and calm my nerves. So just a few seconds with me. All right. First and foremost, I want to uh, express my gratitude to my mom, NCPDP and all of its affiliates. Um, Mom, <laughs> you're amazing. I would not be here without you, and uh, you're my hero. The things you have done with your company, your life, everything you've done has inspired me, and I wouldn't be here without you, and I am so full of gratitude to be up here and share my story with you and my experience. Um, I'm gonna focus on the opiates, but just to let you know, I was addicted to other substances and behaviors as well. Uh, growing up, I was always into sports and played a lot, um, a lot of competitive sports, mostly basketball and soccer. And I got injured, I blew my knee out and, you know, doctor prescribes you pain medication. And I, uh, being a master manipulator that I am, I quickly found out how I could use and abuse the system to to get my, my fix, if you will. Um, and mind you, even before I was 
injured and had a few surgeries on my knee, I was having 20-20 hindsight. I was a, an addict from the beginning. I remember the first time I drank, I, uh, I passed out and woke up in my own throw up and just, I didn't know what was going on at the time, but I, I loved it. It allowed me to escape. And so once I get into injuries and getting the opiates, I was, I was already hooked before I even got there. So um, I quickly figured out how to use and abuse the system, doctor shopping. Um, uh, I would do anything to get my drugs. Um, it didn't matter who I hurt, and unfortunately, it was very easy for me to hurt those closest to me, especially my mom and my father and my family, uh, my loved ones, my beautiful fiance, Gabrielle. I know I, we got through some tough times to, together, and uh, people always stuck around because they, they saw something in me that I couldn't see at the time. And now that I'm nearly a year sober, um, I'm just now beginning to see how life it truly is and what the meaning is. And where I am today, um, I just, I just want to do what's right. I don't want to steal from people. I don't want to live that grimy lifestyle because I've done things that I am absolutely not proud of. Um, that's neither here nor there. That was part of my journey, and it brought me here today on this stage. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm not ashamed to be an addict. I am, I'm grateful that I went through what I did because it made me the man I am today and able to stand here before you. Whereas before, I would know you're all in here, so I'd go rooting through your stuff in your room. I probably stole something from you or your family members. <laughs> um, the, the work that NCPDP is doing with PDMP is, I think, absolutely amazing. The opiate epidemic is so huge. I mean, epidemic is such a small word to describe it, and attacking it from the healthcare front is, is awesome. Any difference we can make could potentially save lives. Well, not potentially, it will save lives. Um, I was fortunate enough to, to seek the help I needed, and I, I continue to do so on a daily basis. I seek help daily. Um, and any difference that can be made, this PDMP is just, it's such a, an amazing idea. And I, I encourage anyone and everyone to, to make a difference, do what's right. Um, drugs claim lives so easily. I mean, I, I nearly died multiple times. I, I, I'm here, obviously, but I, I was on the brink of death multiple times. And, overdoses, in situations that I shouldn't be in, and I was, so. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm a little taken back right now, I apologize. You know, addiction doesn't discriminate. I mean, I, I came from a, an amazing childhood perfect looking, outside looking in, everything was great. Um, I was raised by amazing parents, but there was, there was always something missing within me, and I, I, I thought I found the answer in drugs and alcohol because it, it made me feel whole at the time, which looking back now, it, it just made that hole bigger. Um, Thank you for everything, Mom. You're welcome. I really appreciate it. And uh, if anybody has any questions, would like to talk to me on my journey personally, I would love to sit down with you or just chat with anybody. Um, I encourage you to make a difference because you could save a life. And one life, who knows, that person could go on to be a paramedic that saves your life one day or be a doctor that doesn't prescribe those opiates that you don't need, what have you. The, the, the opportunities are endless. So. I, I greatly appreciate this opportunity to speak. Um, I hope I said something worthwhile because I'm nervous as shit. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm
don't know. So I think this underscores the impact of the epidemic and how our work here at NCPDP touches everyone's life. Daniel, I know it took a lot of courage for you to do this today, and I am so proud of you. I love you. Thank you. you can read more about NCPDP's efforts to curb the opioid epidemic in our 2017 annual report and the strategic initiatives on our website.